So welcome to Showbiz today, and this is uh, your host Kofidia. I'm here with my my guest, Navin, music producer, uh, multi-talented music producer, as I'll say. So today you're going to really enjoy the show. You're welcome to Showbiz today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, great. I'm glad to be here. So who is Navin? Multi-platinum music producer, Grammy-nominated music producer, uh, the best son in the world. The best brother in the world. Now I was I was looking at your bio. Mm -hmm. You work with all this. J just tell me their names again. The artists, the international artists you work with. All right, so I've worked with Kanye West, Drake, Nas, The Game, Miguel. Mostly, almost everybody on TDE's roster: Reason, J Rock, Zakari, uh, Davies, Wale. A lot. I can't even. Nah. Like, the, the, I could, the connection. I mean, um, I, I, who who gets you to them? Uh, I mean, uh, do one work. I mean, speak for itself for the other people to come. Or, I mean, who, who gets you the connection? Honestly, I have a story for every placement I have, and I can trace it back to the first person I met to get me there. So it's usually easier, like if you give me like the name of an artist, and I can trace it back. Okay. But for the most part, the general answer to that question is. Uh, just through my network, like I've gotten placements through other producers. Uh, it's mostly mostly through other producers. Sometimes the artists will reach out to me directly, or just being plugged with other people that know people. So, it's usually how it goes. I know these international artists. Some are very hard to please. I mean, how how difficult is working with them? You worked in the whole album, so no, I don't like it. Let's let's try it and let's do another one. I mean, you know, everything's trial and error, but my I have a way higher success rate if I'm in the studio with the artist because I actually can play the keys okay. well enough, and so I always just I'm just I'm in the studio and it's like, okay, how are you feeling? What vibe do you want to do? And we'll just listen to a bunch of music, gain some inspiration, and then we just create there. Okay. Uh, would you say it, it was more easier for you living there? I mean, are you sure you'd be able to just get it out if you were if you were living here? No, I don't think I'd be able to just for the fact that like all of the connections that I have are already in LA. And so a lot of them were already my friends that I've known for a long time. And so we already had a relationship, a working relationship. And while I was away in school, they were still in LA, you know, working with other artists out there. And so the moment they get opportunities and they know how good of a producer I am, they always usually bring me in. So it's really all through collaboration at the end of the day. Okay. Are they satisfied after working for them? Oh. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. So, so who are you want to work with? Apart from all these names, are they other international artists you're looking forward to work with? Uh, yeah, really, I'm, I'm honestly open to working with any and everybody, okay. as long as you're good. Okay. What up in Ghana here? Yeah, same here. I've already been working with a few of the artists out here. Yeah, uh, their names, do you have? Oh yeah, uh, worked with Kwame Na MP. Okay. Um, me and Rocky Downey, we already started a couple records in LA. We're gonna finish those up out here. Uh, I work with Brian the Mensa, Spicer Dobbs. Um, who else? I think that's it so far. But I also have more sessions like literally lined up for the rest of the week, so, but that's what I've worked with so far. Okay. Until these sessions happen. Okay. Now someone will say, ah, now you have connection with all these big artists. So I mean, it will be very possible for you to connect a collaboration or just you have the link. So can you just help? Have you had any calls like that or any? Not well. To a certain extent, I know I've had random people who've never heard of me just. DM me like, oh, send this beat to Drake. Like, it's not how this works. <laughs> Listen, like, it's like after every record I have come out, it's always like one or two people that'll be like, send my beats to this person. It's like, it's not how it works. I can't, I can't just, I can't just go to, um, let's see. I can't go to Battle Cat and be like, send this beat to Dr. Dre. You feel me? It's like you have to build a working relationship with the person. You have to like, you know, also just do your own homework and build your own brand too. Like there's a lot of different ways to get to artists, but like directly just hitting up somebody that you've never met in your life or even know is like, that's not the way to go about it. Okay. At least not for me. Okay, let me put it this way. 
if you're managing an artist in Ghana here mm -hmm. and he wants a collaboration with maybe Drake or the people, some of the people you've worked with outside, it will, it will be possible. I feel like anything's possible, but at the same time, it's a lot of politics that goes into everything. Okay. A whole lot. Even just trying to, it's... It's not easy like that. It's, yeah, it's definitely not easy. Wow. I mean, it's the biggest artist in the world. At the end of the day, like, it's, it's, it's too many politics. And I honestly hate it, but, like, I understand it. It's like you have to, there's certain guidelines that you have to follow and a certain way that you have to move within the industry. Is it that when you work after working with them, that is it? Or you just keep checking up on them or you're my friends, let's hook up on this? Uh, there's, always, there's always different ways to, you know, keep in the relationship with the artist. Some people have just, like, a working relationship, which is usually what I do, or sometimes, like, if you guys just vibe so crazy and you're just with them all the time and just, you know, constantly on their line all the time, then, you know, you guys build that relationship. I'm but sure that that's when you can say, oh, I have this artist here who is very good. You might probably want to listen to me and see if you want to feature or something. That's usually when that happens. But also one thing about a lot of the biggest artists, well, I won't say a lot of them, but some of the biggest artists, they're paying attention to everything that's going on. Okay. They pay attention to a lot of music. So I'm sure, like... There's a lot of artists that haven't gone under the radar. Okay. So, so w when you walk into the studio with Kanye or Drake or any, w w what comes to mind? Like, let's work. I want a beat. Shoot, I usually just start off with uh, the melody. Okay. So I know even when I'm just working with regular songwriters, what we'll do is um, I'll come up with a cre uh, I'll come up either with a piano melody or I'll just make an entire an entire loop, and then. We'll start mumbling words to it, recording that down, and then we'll just start piecing stuff together like, okay, this sounds like this could be a hook, this could be a verse, this could be a bridge. And then once we have that structured out, then we start writing to it. Okay. So, um, on a part that the musician already has the song, how do you cause that maybe you're creating your beats and the person singing to it, or the, the beat is created, the musician already has his words, everything already and he wants to create a beat to it, or you create oh, a beat and then so you change things on it. There's also situations where, um, I've been in situations plenty of times, I also like working this way, um, an artist will record to like a beat on YouTube, whatever, but they want like something else. And so we'll, they'll strip the beat out completely and then they'll just send over the acapella or they'll just play the acapella. And then I'll just play like melodies and like chords the acapella and then we just start building the whole song around the acapella okay you've been nominated but not won any award yet so all you have no i haven't won yet why is it so no there might be a reason if you work with all these big artists at least if you've been nominated i mean because you got to think about it like even oh, outside of like oh, is that your black or the hair nah <laughs> okay. definitely not even outside of me working with the big artists <laughs> There's other big artists as well. Maybe not to y'all, or maybe not to the rest of the world, but for album of the year, it's like you're going against Doja Cat, who's outstanding. She had a really great breakout year. Then you're going against Lady Gaga, big pop artist. You're going against Ariana Grande. Like you're going against so many other big artists. So it's like, it's not like, oh, one artist is bigger than the rest in that okay. category. Okay. Okay. And it's crazy because None of, like, out of all the artists that won, it ended up being John Baptiste. Nobody expected him to win. Okay. A lot of people didn't even know who he was. Okay. So I really feel like it comes down to, I don't know. I don't know, because I feel like it's all a voting committee. So okay. I don't really know what goes into actually winning a Grammy. Okay. Do you listen to our songs, Ghanaian songs? Yeah. Okay, if I ask you to name five top artists to you who are doing so great, who would they be? After working with Kwam Nam P, he's one of my favorites. There's this other girl named Amare. She's okay. fire. Okay. Uh, Yakoto, Rocky Downey. I almost feel like this is biased just because like I'm already working with these people. But they're my favorites. That's why I'm working with them. Okay. Um, let's see. Spicer Dobbs. He's fire. Uh, I really have an appreciation for artists once I see like their workflow okay. and how they are in the studio. Like, are you actually putting in the time or are you just like BSing around just like, you know, 
being lazy, kind of working, kind of not working, but yeah. Okay, so what about outside? Do you, you, you kind of enjoy our songs here? Or just that when you come here, because you are here that you, you prefer listening to, or you listen when you're outside? No, I listen when I'm outside too. But it's mostly, most of the stuff that's being played is Nigerian Afrobeat oh. artists. And it's crazy because I was on Apple Music trying to like find more Ghanaian artists because I don't live out here, so I don't know who's popping and who's not. I'm just going off of either what my brother's playing me or what I see on the internet. Okay. And so um, just going through these Apple playlists, uh, these Apple Music playlists, I'm trying to find, okay, who's this person? Where are they from? Okay, this person's from here, this person's from here. I went through about like 40 or 50 songs and they were all Nigerian except Kelvin Boy. <laughs> that was the only Ghanaian artist on one of these playlists. And I'm just like, why is that? Like, why, why aren't there more Ghanaian artists, you know, being exposed? Because there's so much talent out here, but it's like Nigerians are taking over. And that's no shot or any shade towards the Nigerians because they're great. But I mean, why? You mean they're working? Some say some of what you present to their population. Yeah, I mean... We are, if we are 35 or 30 million, we are 250, so the size. Or yeah, like but doing, at the they same... They doing good music and this. I mean, like, every, like, they make good music, but we do too. So I'm trying to, like, I honestly don't understand how the music industry works out here, and I'm still trying to learn. That way, I feel like once I get understanding, I can be of service a lot better than me just like producing records for the artists because I feel like right now that's like the only way I feel like I'll be able to get more artist exposure is by me producing for them because of my following in the states okay. and so people are going to be paying attention to what I'm doing and with the artists that I'm producing for and everybody in the states they already love Afrobeats like I don't really go to day parties much but when I do they're always playing Afrobeats okay. but it's always like Wizkid and they play Thames, you know, top Nigerian artists, Burner Boy. Apart from the artists you've recorded with, um, do you, have you had any message from our, our top artists so far? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, I'm supposed to link with uh, Black Sheriff okay. soon. Um, we still got to reach out to Sako Day's team. Uh, yeah, but my whole focus this trip was more so connecting with everybody that wants to just like freely connect with me. Okay. And so for me, I only reach out to people twice. Okay. So if you don't respond to me after the second time, you'll never hear from me again. Okay. That's how I work, okay. even in the States. Okay. Now, your general of beats, do you do something, okay, my focus is just hip hop, Afro beats. Do you do gospel? Um, uh, uh, Love and Rock, what, 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 I mean, what, your area of beats. I do whatever I get paid for. So you can do gospel, anything? I literally can do whatever. Okay. Because I, trust me, like, I think just the fact that, like, I understand music mm -hmm. and I understand, like, the music theory behind it as well and I can play keys, gives me an advantage over a lot of other producers. Don't you think the young artists will be saying, ah, no, you're producing for Kanye West, how can I approach this man? Because Kanye West, imagine the money he will give you, how can I pay you? We work with budgets. Budget, and, and your budget will make them run away. <laughs> don't you think so? I don't think so. I think it's a reasonable price. Wow. From what my manager, you know, but I don't, I don't handle any of the business. Oh, I let okay. my manager do all that. So he wants, like, the thing I like about my manager, like my management team, they just want me to solely focus on creating anything that deals with business or paperwork, any of that, they handle. Okay. okay. So um, if an artist comes to you, um, the money is very good. My son had this talent, no. This talent will not go anywhere. What advice will you give to certain artist? We're going to work until I think the record is good. But ha have you taken any money that you regretted so far? Then? I shouldn't have taken this money because I know this artist will not go far. I don't even think it's about them going far. It's like, is the quality of music good? Because okay. you can make, you can be a great artist and never get, and never make it. That happens all the time. 
Okay. There's plenty of artists that are like better than the artists that are in the industry now, but you know they'll just never make it for whatever reason. <laughs> Whether they don't have the sources, they was, don't have the I, money. I was just about to you. What do you think is the reason if an artist is good? How come the person never makes it? Oh, well, I was getting to that. Uh, it could be they don't have enough money to really market themselves, or it could be situations where they're in the industry and then they've burned bridges, got blackballed. It's all types of different situations, or they just don't have the connections. Okay. Would you love to maybe say someone say manage an artist? Market artist? Manage. Manage? No. Nah. Uh, I definitely uh, don't want to manage. Sign and, just sign me under your record label because I, I know I have the talent, but I don't have the means, I don't have money, I don't have anything. But you have spotted the artist I know. When I help the artist, I can get him somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Like, if they have the talent, I'm going to do whatever I can. Like I have my, I have my own artists in the states that I work with now that okay. I'm still trying to like, we're still trying to piece it all together. But you know, it's just it's difficult because it's so many artists in the world. It's literally like I just found out that sixty thousand songs are uploaded to streaming services every day. Wow, sixty thousand. So you look like a rapper yourself. Have you been there? Have you tried something? Man, nah. If I could rap, I would have been out of here a long time ago. I wouldn't need to work with other artists because well, I already right. produce. <laughs> so I would just blow my own self up. You rather be a singer? Man, if I could sing, I wish I could sing. Okay. I'm going to take singing lessons. I'm going to quit producing. Have you heard of Kitty? Singer. Kitty. Yeah, I've heard of Kitty. Do you, did you enjoy his song? Yeah. Okay, okay. Now let's talk about when people see. I mean, I mean, you've been in Ghana for so six times, right? When people see your hair, what comes to mind? Honestly, the amount of times I've been pulled over by the police because of this hair is annoying. I remember the last time I came out here. <laughs> There's, they pulled. We were in an Uber and they pulled us out the Uber and searched the whole Uber. And the cop told me, "Oh, uh, when I find the drugs, I'm gonna show you." And I was like, good luck. <laughs> You're not going to find nothing. So if the cop had planted it and arrested you, what would you have done? I don't think they'd be dumb enough to do that. I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not. I really would hope not. So you, you think it's not right just by the appearance? People look at you and they decide. Yeah, but you know, people are going to be people. People are going to judge books by their cover or judge a book by their cover. I don't really fall into that category because I like, I'm going to see people for who they are just off of like knowing you and vibing you. Okay. I don't judge based off of appearance. Okay. Now, talking about you, um, I had, which, which part of the country do you come from? Um, Cal San Bernardino, California. Okay. So you're in a full Ghanaian? Yeah, I'm full Ghanaian. Okay. Where, where, where in um, Ghana do you live? Uh, my you? dad is from Apom. My mom, I don't know what part of Kumasi she's from, but she's from Kumasi. Okay. So do you have siblings? Um, I'm the only one out of my siblings that was born in the States. Girlfriends? Have none. Oh, fine gentleman, dark handsome, lovely <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah, man. So I'm, what, what do you tell them when they chase you all over the place? Shoot, meet me at the studio. Because <laughs> I got work to do. Oh, how? how? Trust me, man. You work, but during the night, you know, you feel cool than under the blanket. So. This is, it's, it's funny because they've been rolling, like, my, my people's been rolling around with me every day. And oh, so they're tired. Know. They're tired by 11 p.m. I'm like, at 11 p.m. is usually when the sessions start back home. Like, I do sessions from 9 p.m. Like, I could start at 12 p.m. during the day. Okay. And I'll think that my day is done, and then my boys hit me like, oh, we got the studio book from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. All right, I'm there. Okay. Now I've worked from 12 to 9 a.m. the next morning. Do you have time for yourself at all? Honestly, I don't, and it's bad. Like, I've been, I've been told so many times, like, you got to take a break. Just chill, you know. I'm just a workaholic. I think that's just what it is. I don't really have time to, like... Because I just feel like I'm still grinding. Even, even though, like, I'm Grammy nominated and stuff, like, I still feel like I'm barely scratching the surface of what I actually can do. Because okay. I know what my potential is. And okay. so I feel like there's so much more work that needs to be done. So I'm still always working. Okay. Now, now last two questions. Then. 
you know, um, when somebody gets to a height, and someone, okay, maybe I like to train two or three music producers to follow my footsteps. So if I'm now around, they can step my shoes and stuff. Do you have any like uh, that? Yeah, uh, one of my old roommates, it's a girl. Her name is uh, Nayel. Okay. I taught her how to produce and literally got her first placement on uh, Dom Kennedy's album. Okay. So that's one. Um, but yeah, that's been like the main one. Like I've been trying to teach a lot of black women producers because I feel like the states just need more, or the world just in general just needs more of that. But honestly, I'm down to take whoever under my wing as long as like they're willing to do the work. Okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. like working with lazy people. Okay. W w when you spoke about, I mean, Nigerians all over, I mean, w what do you think we can also do to get our people there? Do you think we, we, are, we are missing something or there's something wrong with that? I mean, what, what like as far as like getting the artists on their level? No, like we feel our presence there. Like you see when you go to a club or go to a studio, I mean, uh, like Afro, you see you hear Nigerians, Afrobeats all over the place. So literally do you hear Ghanaian songs there or is that not the case? I've never been to Nigeria, so I don't no, know. No, I'm talking about there. Oh, yes. out there? Yes, how do we get our music just there? Is, it, is, it, is there a way we can do that? Uh, changing the sound, I think. I feel like changing the sound and just making music that can be, that's digestible to everybody, as opposed to just only being digestible to a certain demographic, okay. which is Africa, because I've uh, been telling everybody this. Rima is one of my favorite artists, like one of my favorite Afrobeat artists, because he's somebody that likes to experiment with his sound. He's not confined to a certain sound. So, and he's versatile. Like, I'm on Instagram and I see four American producers that are on his album. Mind you, they're not African at all. They come from like... The name of your artist you're talking about? Rima? Yeah, Rima. Okay. He's a Nigerian artist. Okay. And so, just that alone just lets me know like, okay, they're actually willing to expand their sound. And the same stuff that he's doing now is the same stuff that I was trying to get people to do back in 2018, 2019. But nobody was receptive to it because, and I was being told like, yeah, you know, Ghanians, they just want to stick to their one sound and that's that. And I feel like if that's really the case, then that's what's hindering y'all from expanding to the rest of the world. So like all the stuff that I'm doing with artists, I feel like it's more of a crossover sound. Okay, so is it that you try reaching out to them or and they refused or they come to you and you refuse or how? I don't get it. No, so it'll be me like, um, I've sent, I've had my cousin send beats out to certain artists. Okay. And like the response was like, yeah, you know, they want to stay with, you know, they want the sound to be more rooted in the culture. Okay. Like they didn't want the crossover sound. Okay. And this was three, four years ago. Okay. And look at where we are now. Nigerians are doing the crossover sound. Okay. And so... How does it make a feel for a Ghanaian so that no, Nigerians are just, are just making it, just making it. How does it make a feel as a Ghanaian? I just feel like we should have been right there with them because didn't Afrobeat start with us? It did. Okay, now, the, your final words. I mean, anything you have to say to your fans here, yeah, you can tell. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. If you really want to do this, put 120% into it. If you're only doing this for money, that's cool, but you're not going to have any longevity at all. Uh, do your split sheets, because I also just found out that like people are reluctant to sign split sheets, which is crazy. Uh, that's basically how your agreement on how much you're going to get paid on the back end and the royalties. And yeah, just keep making great music.